Hi, welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Now, after Douglas Ross resigned as the leader of the Scottish Tories, there was that little bit of a power vacuum. But fortunately, because nature abhors a vacuum, uh, Murdo Fraser so kind of stepped up and said he would consider running for leadership. He gave someone there. And had it just stayed like that, there would have undoubtedly been a little coronation. He'd have been the new leader. Things would have ticked along nicely. However, and as the Tories main party down in England discovered when they imposed Rishi Sunak on the members without a vote because um, there was a vote they, they put in uh, Liz Truss but of course they didn't like it in, in, in Parliament so they made sure that she was out and then they imposed Rishi that doesn't go down very well with the members it was like a cup of cold sick and the members made sure they knew it at the election uh, yeah don't piss off your members so to impose that sort of coronation, it's fine if that's what everyone wants. But memberships like to feel they're important. They like that little vote. So fortunately, Russell Findlay has stepped forward. He's offering an alternative as well. If they have the two of them, they can go to the party membership and say, your choice. And whoever wins, wins. Move on. Whoever loses, backs the winner. Make it a clean fight. There's no dragging skeletons out of cupboard. No backstabbing. You've seen how bad that can be after Sturgeon left the SNP. It was an awful, bloody mess. You don't want that. You want it to be quick, clean, move on. That's the secret. Let's take a look to see what Russell Findlay brings to the party. Here goes. So Russell Findlay makes Conservative leadership pitch as a backlash emerges against Murdo Fraser's plans. Whatever his plans are. Uh, the former journalist said his party could no longer be defined just by being against independence, but had to offer a positive vision of conservatism. Well, that's in this day and age is going to be quite a, a hard ask, I think. Um, people have made it clear that, uh, you know, the, the 14 years or so of conservatism uh, at Westminster has not gone down very well. Um, they have rejected it. So it's going to have to be a slow burn, I think. You know, that, that's the way to do it. Um, and hope, of course, that Labour will make mistakes. Uh, although, um, spoilers, Labour will make mistakes and already have. Uh, anyway, Russell Findlay has made an early pitch for the Scottish Tory leadership as he called for a positive vision of conservatism in the country. The West Scotland MSP has emerged as the front runner in the battle to replace Douglas Ross. Now, of course, Ross uh, fell into disfavour by sort of the problem he had with Duguid, David Duguid, and Duguid being ill in hospital or whatever, and Ross basically uh, turfing him out of a seat and going and standing for himself. A seat he should otherwise have won. David Duguid would probably have won the seat, but people were so annoyed at what uh, Douglas Ross did that he lost it. Not by much, it must be said, but he lost it nonetheless. Uh, he accused the party of focusing too much on what we're opposed to in the past few years as opposed to setting out the positive case for a modern popular conservatism. Yeah, if all you can do is oppose and reject uh, and rail against, then people do see you as a sort of a protest party um, and you get the protest vote. But you don't want a protest one. You, you vote, you well, you take the protest vote, but you also, you want the build vote. Do this and build. We, if you break us in, we will, and so forth. Much more positive. Uh, the former journalist said the Tories could no longer be just defined by our opposition to independence, but had to offer policies which reflect our values and a positive change we want to bring to the lives of people across Scotland. Well, everyone's life in Scotland will automatically improve, even though it, Labour are awful, simply by not having the SNP in control. Now, you've very well done. You've got rid of one, uh, one you fought, fought and won one battle, Westminster. But now, in sort of uh, 691 days or whatever it is, we have the Battle of Holyrood. And that, of course, is the important one. Got to win that. Uh, anyway, he said, people know we're unionists. It's in the name, Conservative and Unionist Party. He said they need to find out why we're Conservatives. Well, you haven't been. That's the problem. That's why you've been booted out. You haven't been Conservatives. You've moved so far to the left to become centrist. The, the, the actual conservative part of the conservatism has, has gone, isn't it? It's, it's been subsumed into sort of semi-comatose socialism. 
Uh, anyway, Mr. Ross is stepping down after nearly four years in the role, and he faced criticism for standing in the general election in place of David Duguid, but a bing, like you just said, uh, who was deemed too sick by party bosses to campaign. Although he is making a remarkable, it must be said, recovery. Mr. Ross lost the Aberdeenshire North and Moray East seat, suffering badly from a big reform vote in the constituency, and he will now move to the back benches, paving the way for a new face to take over. Yeah, um, he lost the seat, so he's no longer an MP, but he is called still an MSP. Um, he had a dual role. Uh, right in the Daily Mail, Mr Finley and the Scottish Tories had avoided a defeat on the same scale as the party in England, but said they should not kid ourselves. to pointing out that thousands of Scots who previously voted for the Scottish Conservatives chose not to do so this time, and may not do so again for quite some time, until there's something positive to offer, until the Tories move back to the right and become a party of the right, rather than, as I say, this centrist mishmash where nobody can tell the Tories and Labour apart, this uni party in the middle. He added, during the election, I campaigned alongside hard-working activists across the beautiful country. And he did, and he, to be fair, he did put the hours in. You could see him, he was always there, you know, glad handing and back, you know, back patting and all that, smiling for the cameras. He did push himself around. Uh, Anyway, he said, uh, many confided to me in their concerns about what they, rightly in my view, identified as a lack of positive vision, stretching back years. Well, they haven't been positive for years because they've got nothing to be positive about. When's the last bit of good news they had? Um, you know, you've had, you had uh, all the infighting over the Brexit. You then had the pandemic. You have then had the cost of living crisis. Um, and it's all been one pile of shit after another. And then you have all those different leaders because nobody what you know wanted to actually just sit down and get on with the job of course having an insidious little shard of shit like rishi sunak destroying the conservative party didn't help because of course um it rubs off the stain transfers doesn't it uh he said i think the simple truth is that over the years the scottish conservatives have focused too much on what we're opposed to we mentioned that of course he says his own conservatism is rooted in a belief of aspiration and trusting people to make their own decisions. Well, that's not true. All governments like to make decisions for people. No government allows and wants the people to have their own, make their own mind up and do their own thing. Um, control, it's all about control, isn't it? It's a bit, a bit of a lie, really, isn't it? Anyway, he says, it comes as a backlash grows against the prospect of Murdo Fraser becoming leader. The Mid-Scotland of Fife MSP stood in 2011 on a platform of splitting from the UK party and forming a new entirely purely focused on Scotland. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. The, the Scottish Tories are only a branch of the Conservative Party, as opposed to the Scottish Labour being totally separate from the Labour Party. Um, and they want the Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party to be in and of itself its own entity, obviously closely linked, but not under control of. And that's um, that's very divisive in the Tory party because how can you call yourself a unionist party if you're wanting to split it kind of the clues in the name isn't it anyway uh well we'll round off there we'll come up and uh, finish the video so yeah throw the pair of them up throw their um you know uh, Murdo Fraser throw up uh Findlay let's see who the members choose but the important thing is a there is a choice and b Whoever loses backs the winner fully and moves on. Otherwise, they're finished. I don't think they should split. I think it would be very silly for them to split from the main party because it kind of ruins the name unionist, doesn't it? Um, open to ridicule there. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Do please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, leave a like, leave a comment, please share the video, and I'll speak to you later. Bye.